<laughs> nope. Or you the, did a great job. We're just, we're just happy we can pronounce it. <laughs> uh, how did the how does the horsey That's spell his name? Speed. There's a couple of different ways. Whatever works for you. Whatever is easiest. Okay. Um, I do want to correct myself on one thing though. Holly out here is not Kurt's mom. It is uh she is his girlfriend, and we have Kurt walking up to us right now, Aww. and this is the Preswalski clone, the only clone Preswalski horse in the world. So I have Gavin to tell us more about Kurt here, who is very curious and wants to get on the truck with us. That's right. So clone, Kurt is a very special horse because he is the world's only clone Chevalsky horse. And that's important because he represents a distinct genetic line that died out in the population in the 1980s. And so by cloning him and bringing him essentially back from the dead, we're able to increase genetic diversity in this highly endangered wild horse species and help them thrive in their native habitat again. And so it's a really amazing story because so he his cell line was frozen in our frozen zoo in the 1980s. And so so from that, we put those genes in the uh, embryo and a domestic horse, and Kurt was born. Well, how long does that process take? So it's a, I, a long time, I assume. Yeah, it's a very lengthy process. I mean, our team here of conservation scientists have been working on this project since the 1980s, and so then it was it came to fruition in 2020, and it's a real conservation success story because this is not just a story about Chevalsky's horses. It's also proof of concept for conservation cloning and how that can help save imperiled species all over the world. We'll talk about the whole process because it seems like he turned out to be very healthy and living a good life now. He did. So the, the one thing is we've had to teach him how to be a wild horse, and so that's the role that Holly serves. So since he was born to a domestic horse mare, somebody had to teach him how to speak wild horse. And so, so Holly is teaching him the language of a Chevalsky horse, the attitude, the behavior, so that he knows how to be a fully functioning member of Chevalsky horse society because ultimately the goal is he will become a breeding stallion and pass on those genes, but he needs to know how to be a wild horse first. Tell us about this breed of horses. Where do they come from? So they're from Eastern Europe, I mean, east, the Eastern part of the Russian steppe region, and they're the last true wild horse. So they exist on those big open grasslands of Russia and Eastern Ukraine and China and Mongolia. And eventually they unfortunately died out in their native habitat. And so then conservationists went to work on bringing the species back. And then why are these two separate from the other four and the foal that we saw? So that's a great question. So, so Kurt is in his training program right now to learn how to be a wild horse. And so we're making sure that we set him up for success and Holly is teaching him all those behaviors and then once he's fully mature stallion which will be about four to five years old then he'll move and join the rest of the herd here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Do you think that he is going to be the one and the only clone or are there more to come? You never know. I mean, it's an important conservation technology and so we can apply it to a lot of different things and so you never know what will be needed in the future. And are these horses, are they friendly? Because I, all I want to do is reach down and pet his face, but so, you said I'm not allowed to. So I wouldn't call them friendly, but they're used to their wildlife care specialists taking care of them, and we don't try and treat them like pets. We try and give them a lot of respect and distance, but they are trained for different behaviors that help us care for them. And so uh, they are tractable, but I wouldn't say tame or friendly. All right. Anything else you want to add? Maybe a fun fact about the breed of the horse or Kurt himself? I think the most interesting thing is this this is the last true wild horse species. So they you know, they split off thousands of years ago from a domestic horse. And so, you know, you hear about, you know, wild mustangs and things like that. Those are not truly a wild horse. So Shavalsky's horse is the only truly wild horse in the world. And so it's really a neat thing that people can come here to the Safari Park in San Diego and experience this incredibly endangered species. Will these two eventually be put with the rest? Exactly. Eventually, in a couple of years, they'll be ready to move up with the rest of the herd and create more Chevalsky's horses, if we're lucky. You said that they're very spunky, and then they'll, they like to run around a little bit. Oh, they are. So, you know, they are a little more spirited than a traditional domestic horse, and so they like to kick and run and buck, and they'll, knit and they'll whinny and neigh, and sometimes even, you know, nibble on each other's tails and things like that. So there, there's a lot of personality in these guys. I love it. Well, thank you so much for introducing us to Kurt and then Holly as well. Uh, very cool, the one and the only cloned horse in the world. Paul and Lauren, I'll send things back to you. Casey, I, I thought he was going to talk about it, but I don't know if you remember that Rolf Benershka, the beloved Charger kicker, we... <laughs> Don't get your toes bit. Uh, wrote a story about Kurt because Kurt is named after his father, who was a pioneer in the bio, you know, engineering the freezing of the the DNA of these animals with the with the frozen zoo. So, Kurt's named yes. after one of our beloved Charger dads, right? Which I think is. 
Yes. And I've been pronouncing the horse's name all wrong. It's not Przewalski, it's Przewalski. Przewalski. Okay, so Shavol. that's something that I asked Shavol. Gavin. Which one is it? And he said that you can either say one or the other. Oh, so I haven't been. So you're not wrong, Paul. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Did he want to eat your toes, Casey, or are you just uh, <laughs> No, I think he's nervous. just munching on the alfalfa. He doesn't really care about me too much. All right. Well, wow. well done. In addition to that would hurt a lot, though. Yes, Polly I bet. teaching him to be a wild horse. I wonder if he could teach him how to play football. Oh, or kick a ball, kick a ball, kick -a -ball. <laughs> with a hind kick. That, wasn't there a cartoon or something? All right, Case, we have to uh, roll. How exciting! Yes, and you know, and it's exciting and scary at the same time, because we're, we're, where's it going to be a hundred years from now? Could there be? We won't be around. Could there be four Lauren Finneys walking around? Lord help us. <laughs>